Live from Carborough, it's the Chris or Jenny Show, featuring Deej on WCOM FM, Chapel Hill and Carborough. DJ Simon. Yeah, good to be back here What's at up, uh, man? Piggly Wiggly. A lot of questions from the audience, and yeah. we haven't heard from you in yeah. a while. Yeah, like my brother came to visit last time, and like the only time we could all meet up was on Friday, so I just skipped. So I was uh, folks I was thought, in spirit. Folks thought maybe the show had passed you by, you lost interest, lost uh, the fire in the belly. I don't know. Never. Never. Um, yeah, so what's new? Uh, Squid Softball's back in, in action. We're, uh, we're on three. Oh, man. Um, but uh, we're playing... The former Steel String Sluggers. Ah, uh, nice tie they're, into uh, the guest. They're now sponsored by another industry. We'll uh, remain nameless. Uh, remain we won't nameless. give them the, you know, the We won't give them the plug that, yeah. that this show brings. You really um, messed up not keeping that sponsorship going, I guess. Eric, no. you have no, no idea the value of us saying your name on the show. I'll people, learn that value yes. tonight, I think. People, you actually usually lose business when they uh, say. Let's get him in here, Deej. Yeah. So welcome in Eric Knight uh, in studio, or is it Knight? Knight is fine. Thank you. Thank silent. You. What's it like to have two silent letters in your last name? Oh, wow. Um, it probably got bullied a little bit as a child because oh. children can't figure out those like nuances in language. But Can they get? I've heard that one. Um, <laughs> I also get confused a lot because often there's uh, K's in Eric, and people say Eric with a K, and I think, yes, my last name has a K. And so I say yes, and then they spell my name wrong forever. Mm. So Well, welcome, brother. We're very happy Thanks to have you. Me. I've never met you in person, but DJ and I have enjoyed many of your beers oh, yeah. on more than one occasion. <laughs> His beer being from Steel String. Steel String Brewery. Yes, mm-hmm. just hop, skip down the road. A hop and Hops. skip. Nice one. A hop and stumble down the road from yeah. where we're sitting right now, Deej. Yep. And a fine young man from Cambridge, Massachusetts. How did wow. you find North Carolina? Went deep into my biography. I came down for college. I went to Guilford College in Greensboro, Man. where I was a college radio DJ. So it's not my first time behind the microphone or in nice. a community radio booth. Um, Very nice. But yeah, I ended up going to school there and ended up sticking around. Just love the area and the people uh, and the music. I think that's a big reason for me to stick around was the local music scene in Greensboro and in Chapel Hill. And I have some cousins uh, in Cambridge. Cambridge, Mass? Probably not. Yeah, yeah. Where Eric is from? Yeah, my, my uncle's uh, he's a physics professor at Harvard. Total moron. <laughs> There's a lot of those at Harvard, I think. <laughs> Wait a minute, you went to Guilford? Guilford College, yes, in Greensboro. Guilford College of Greensboro, okay, which is uh, another Fighting nice town. Fighting Quakers. Yeah. The Fighting Quakers. Nice. 
Well, welcome. And you Thank founded, you. along with a couple of other partners, yeah. uh, you, you are an original founder of Steel Shing Brewery. Correct. Right? Correct. Is it the same three guys that started out? Uh, <laughs> yes, for the most part. Yeah, we had another partner in the beginning, but he was more interested in mixed martial arts than drinking beer. And yeah. so mm. he pursued that, which was good for him. What a maniac. Yeah. No, mixed martial arts is cool. It is. I prefer drinking to getting hit, As so. is hanging out at... White uh, shoes. You can do both. Yeah. They're not mutually exclusive. Not at Steel String, though. Find yeah. another place to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be karate chopping at Steel String, Deej. It's, um, a, it's a small space. It's true. Okay, so when you're thinking about founding Steel String Brewery, are you thinking... So how do you decide if you want a bar or a pub or a bottle shop? Or a brewery? What are the or a gastro pub? There's take, so many things you can or can't have. Take us back. Take Eric. us. Take oh, us wow. through the thought process. Well, I mean, part of the name Steel String comes from the fact that me and my partners all in different bands played bluegrass in college, uh, and it was kind of our introduction to craft beer in so many ways. Is that we would go. We weren't very good, but you know, someone would offer to buy us, uh, you know, a case of beer and maybe a a bottle of whiskey if we came and played at their parties at their house. Nice. um, So that was a kind of introduction for us to drinking something more than, uh, you know, bush light or whatever. Um, For me, it was natural light in the early days, Mm. Deej. Coors Light for me. Yeah, so when we thought about the brewery, and, and, you know, we were definitely thinking about our our background. I played Dobro in college uh, in a band at Guilford. And uh, we definitely thought we wanted a space where, uh, local live music could be played. Um, yeah. Definitely a low key spot for just having a nice afternoon drink. And yeah, I think like thinking about a pub culture that doesn't really quite exist in the U.S. of so just a place where you can get together that's really focused on just hanging out and having a good beer. Was this your first foray into the? I mean, you're a young man, and Steel String's been there for eight or nine years. Yeah, nine years uh, technically in May. So were you? Um, was this your first, like, kind of quote unquote real job? What did you do before you founded Steel Street? I uh, worked at a record label that would be unmentioned, a local record label. Um, hmm. I, Why will they be unmentioned? Uh, I don't know who's listening, and there's uh, <laughs> a lot of people in this town who probably know. Um, but uh, Does I, it rhyme with Verge? Uh, not that one. Okay. All right. um, mm. But I, uh, yeah, out of college, I was really interested in getting into the music industry, and I thought this was a good beer to do it. And then after working in it for a little bit, I decided that it was not really the industry that I really wanted to keep pursuing. Um, yeah. I was home brewer in college and just got together with some people in the local home brewing community, and that's where the idea of Steel String really got started. Mm. Your partners are Will Isley or Eli? Isley. 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 So no um, silent letters there, Deej. It's I S L E Y. Not yeah. like the Scottish whiskey, like the, like Isley, the Brothers. Isley Brothers. And then yeah. Andrew, uh, I'm definitely going to say this wrong, Scharfenberg. Correct. So three original partners are still part of the brewery. Um, and man, you guys are really, you seem to be killing it. Thanks. Um, from yeah. the customer's perspective, <laughs> I'm not just saying because he's sitting here. I've always yeah. enjoyed myself at Steel String. I love Pluck Farm, which we'll get into. Yeah. Right when you guys opened, I've been here just not much longer than you. We got here about nine and a half, ten years ago. And when my wife was pregnant with my daughter, who's now eight years old, uh, she was having like a like a part. What do you call the party when a woman's pregnant? Like um, a shower? Maybe yeah. shower. Maybe shower. So they were having that. And so I said, well, a couple of guys had a pub crawl that day. Man, that sounds so like male chauvinistic or whatever. But I mean, the baby shower's not for me. No. It's a great setup for a story, though. Thank yeah. you, Eric. I take a couple of my buddies, too. We hit um, the cave. We hit um, what is now Speakeasy. What did it used to be, Deej? Uh, uh, it's been speakeasy for a very long time. But beside it was Tyler's, Tyler's Tap Room. We, we do both of those. Yeah. And then we end up at um, Steel String Brewery. And at the time, we we're trying to decide what to name my daughter. Mm. And um, you guys had a beer on tap, Maggie's Farmhouse. And Maggie was in the, in the possible names. Mm-hmm. And so we... So that's not the reason we named my daughter Maggie after mm. your beer. Bob but Dylan I was like, can take some credit too. But yeah, mm. but I was like, how cool that there's Maggie's Farmhouse. Yeah. I'm in this small town. We've only been here a year. My wife, my new daughter. Yeah, it's just the best this day. Oh, yeah. And then um, the next time I go into Steel String, they've renamed the beer. And the reason is there's a – take it from here, Eric. There's a brewery. It's in Georgia, actually. I Georgia, think. okay. Uh, yeah. Terrapin. They, Terrapin. Yes, they sent us a, a cease and desist and – uh, we were new to the game, and yeah. uh, although they hadn't brewed that particular beer for a number of years, uh, they still were interested in protecting their brand. And it's just funny because it's one of those moments where it's you know Bob Dylan came up with that name. It's yeah, like, hmm. it wasn't theirs to begin with. How do you then, all yeah. own this song, this wonderful song yeah. that Bob Dylan you can't, wrote? Like yeah. own a phrase? Yeah. Well, it's like Coolio claiming that you know Weird Al parodied him when Stevie Wonder wrote 
the yeah. original. So it's like, come on, man. <laughs> do uh, do you get a lot of cease and desist? Any other stories you can share? We've signed some uh, non-disclosures about certain other breweries, but we've actually been on the other end where we had a name of a beer that was called Turntable, okay. and which is you know not an original name. It's a single dictionary word, right? Which uh, no one should own. No, no one can own it. It's just a but, word. Uh, <laughs> we made that beer, and then another brewery decided they wanted to make the same beer, and they were a lot bigger than us. And we said, "Hey, we're just a little guy, and if you really want to make that beer, you can. But can we work something out?" and they were very generous, and I think they just wanted to make a clean transfer, and we yeah. were happy with that at the time. Yeah. It was uh, a, a good deal for us. But now, thankfully, that's the only um, serious cease and desist we've ever really faced. Yeah. Now, is there some central repository for beer names that you, yeah. have to, you have to check out before you pick a name, or yeah, how does like, that work? Like, how did Terrapin find you guys? Because you were, I mean, you were like one year into operation. Right. When we they... had made that beer as a homebrew, and it you know, of course, when you're doing that, no one really cares. So, but once you start making commercial, once you start selling mm. it, yeah. So there's an but, app that we use called Untapped. That's mm, just in the yeah. you know uh, beer drinkers use to like jot down if they try something. But that's a good way of just searching names, and we do that every time we make a name now. And so it's definitely forced us to get a little more creative and a little yeah. like you know we're mining deep track deep Paul Simon cuts for lyrics to <laughs> Going name deep. beers after now <laughs> yeah. instead of just you know saying oh that good Bob Dylan song that's what we're gonna name a beer yeah. after. Was that around 10 years ago? Yeah, it must have been. I think it was our first summer, so yeah. Didn't that blow your mind, Deej? A tiny, at the it time, tiny brewery yeah. in, in Carborough, North Carolina. Yeah. Still pretty tiny, I think. So. What was there before? It was like a, like an antique store with like uh, old yes. chairs. It was a, uh, yeah, it was an antique store that the furniture was like stuffed in there to the ceiling. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. A hoarder situation, one might was, say. yeah. And so we <laughs> did have to do some deep cleaning and a lot of dusting when we got the spot. But mm. it's a cool building. And before, I think it was a, um, we've, we hear it was like a fur repository vault in like dry cleaning situation. Deeds loves fur, so that you probably maybe would have been a customer in another life. I don't know. I like, think Carborough is a fur town. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I don't own any fur. I assumed it used to be a bank because isn't there like a bank depository box situation? I think that's the, the dry cleaning drop spot, oh. mm. and that's and there is like a vault, but I think it was to store furs. But you know, this is all hearsay. Yeah. Do you predate um, Glass Half Full? No, I don't think so. No, that was they it before you guys, yeah. Yeah. And Wendy's has been there for a while. Yes. Yeah. Open eye. Right. But I tell you what, though, Eric, when you when you guys showed up, it really did. Like, I mean, I always enjoyed that little block, but uh, I feel like you guys really added something nice to that block. Yeah, it was uh, kind of like a little bit of a dead spot. And it's right on like a big intersection. The epicenter mm. of Carbro, if not the, maybe. Yeah. At least where people live, it's kind of so. It's interesting that there wasn't any, you know, bar restaurants quite on that area of town yet. Right. And I just like, um, I, from day one, I liked, uh, you walk in, I like the mural on the wall, the, yeah. the, the yeah, bands Scott that Nurkin, you've had. Scott Nurkin, muralist extraordinaire, did that. What's his name? Scott Nurkin. Scott yeah, Nurkin. You, most of the murals you see around town probably <laughs> were done by him. He's, He's done, done them some all. great ones, yeah. And that was actually inspired by another Carborough bar that unfortunately is no longer with us called the Reservoir. Oh, yeah, yeah there great is. mural inside of it yeah. that kind of was like, we need to carry on the legacy of that mural, mm. so... Hopefully get some cred. <laughs> right. On. All right. So let's say uh, Brendan Fraser uh, is like thought out caveman situation and he just wants a beer and he just kind of staggers into steel string. What well, one beer do you give this guy to reward him for being unthawed? <laughs> um, I'd say our dad fuel pale lager is really good, but we just did another lager dad called fuel. Stone Away the Time, a Steely Dan reference. Nice. Because I think fits with that kind of, because if he was unthawed, he was definitely Stone Away the Time. So. Yeah, for sure. I, I got to say, and probably this is a stereotype that I fit, but I, I do get the big bond. I mean, you probably can yeah. see a middle-aged white guy coming from a mile away. Like, he's getting the IPA. I always get the big bond <laughs> every time. Yeah, we love that beer, and uh, it's a reason it's like always been our highest seller, and yeah. you know the beer we made the most of over the years. So, of course, when they changed the name of Maggie's Farmhouse, remind me what it was called after that. Little Sadie's Farmhouse Sale. Is it gone or is it still? We still make that. We actually just recently came out with a batch of it. Um, we do it about every spring. You know, with that kind of thinking, we had to think a little bit deeper, and and then maybe just you know, it's harder to copyright tradition like. Uh, you know, music that's in the public domain or like mm. traditional songs. Yeah. So we were like, specifically with a lot of those beers, like thinking of old timey, um, you know, folk and um, bluegrass music that we were like, you know, I doubt the, you know, the person who died a hundred years ago is going to come either, you know, the musician or, you know, if like another brewery wants to use a uh, little Sadie or 
uh, Lonesome Melon or, you know, all these old kind of Appalachian folk songs. You know? Yeah. It's only fair. It's fair use. That's so, a good point because you, uh, again, you had that weird experience in the early days as being the little guy, and now other breweries are kind of coming coming up to you, and it sounds like you try to treat them fairly. Yeah, we actually recently there's uh, we do a Shady Grove beer and a company, uh, someone we knew is actually starting a, a cider company called I think it's a cider company. It, it's another beverage company, not beer, but yeah. they wanted to call it Shady Grove, and they, it's like, you know, I love your Shady Grove beer. Shady Can we Grove, call my that? darling. Mm-hmm. And we said, yeah, absolutely. Like, yeah, we don't, we don't own the rights to that, and, and that's like a, a southern classic. They're gentlemen, Deej. Mm-hmm. Generous, generous uh, beer owners. These guys are. Yeah. What kind of extracurricular activities you got there? You got trivia, open mic, anything like that? Yeah, we just uh, instituted an open mic. We kind of, as COVID has receded a little bit, getting back into doing live music in the tap room. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, yeah, we got the trivia. We've had some really fun events recently. We did a drag show that was really fun. We had a, a Taylor Swift Palooza. Mm. Um, we have a lot of new staff who have, like, really taken the lead on doing some events that I think me and my original partners would have not ever had the idea to do. And I That's think it's cool, great right? that they're, like, really willing to come up with these cool ideas for events and bring in crowds that we, you know, wouldn't have had before. Fresh perspective. Yeah. Uh, one of the things these guys are doing, indeed. so we got a festival coming up um, just next weekend, next Saturday, and that's how I first came across Eric. They're going to provide beer at the WCOM Friends and Family Festival mm. uh, Saturday, April 23rd. Mm. Looking forward to it. So, Eric, thank you so much for jumping in on that. I want to get the Pluck Farm, but here's what I'm going to try to do. So we have four live acts at the festival. I'm going to try to play a song from each of the live acts mm. that are going to be there. Yeah. So let's start with an old friend of the show, Deej, Karen Kay. Oh, yeah. I remember her. Pancakes for Dinner by Karen Kay, a.k.a. the DJ Simon's theme song. Mm. That's beautiful. Yeah. I prefer uh, the sequel, Borscht for Breakfast. (laughs) (laughs) We've had Karen Kay on the show. She is opening. She's the first live act to go on at WCOM Friends and Family Festival, which our friend Eric Knight's 
is going to be there selling beer with Steel String Brewery, one of our favorite brewers. Cool, good stuff. Let's talk about the farm. Absolutely. We know everyone around here and now our audience, which goes across the world, by the way. We go all the way to Washington, beer in Washington. We have fans there. That's mm. near Seattle. Uh, knows that we have this wonderful tap room, the mm-hmm. Steel String Brewery. And recently, Deeds, they opened uh, the farm, which mm-hmm. is like 50 acres, uh, like, I don't know, 10 minutes from here. And it's just this beautiful oasis. So give us the oh, scoop I on that. I appreciate all that. Yeah, we're just, uh, yeah, about 10 miles down Highway 54. Yeah. Carboro, right near Saks Baha. Um, yep. We just opened uh, about a year ago, actually. Oh, Deej. And, uh, it's awesome. Mm. Yeah, we were open on the weekends there to the public. We make all our beer out there now, which is really exciting. And we make it all off of well water, um, which is, you know, fun and an interesting uh, challenge. Yeah, it's yeah, yeah. we uh, We're growing a whole bunch of different stuff out there. We're growing flowers. We have an orchard grow hops and grapes um we're leasing out some land to some local grain growers red tail grains you might know them great guys nice um and so we're really trying to grow a variety of things that we can put in beer and you know use to make our spaces a little more pretty with the flowers my wife takes lead on that she's doing a great job so we're really excited we're actually having our first farmer's market tomorrow morning at 10 out at the farm and uh, we'll be selling some flowers and some beer, and we have a bunch of other vendors selling a whole bunch of great stuff. So you mentioned the farmers market tomorrow morning. I thought you meant the Carbro farmers market, but you're oh, having the we're competing with you're, Carbro. Oh no! Mm. no Actually, competition's you can, good. Uh, you can mm. go to the Carbro market early, get the early bird, all the good stuff that's there, and then you can go down the road and come to ours. Ours goes from ten to two p.m. Do both, folks. And, do both. And yeah. Get out and do things, right, Deej? Yeah. I don't think you can get drink a beer at the Carborough Farmer's Market. You said Farmer's Market, and I was like, wait a minute, you can't have beer at the Carborough Farmer's Market, but it's because you're having your own Farmer's Market. But again, it's a, it's a short enough drive, I think you can do both. Absolutely. And, you know... By the way, our show is under... so much the Carborough Farmer's Market. Our show is underwritten by the Carborough Farmer's I'm just yeah. kidding. That's not true. So that's cool. And the space, so f- what, 40 acres, 50 acres? 57 total. A lot of it's woodland. But, mm. uh, yeah, we have a big open area in the front and a beer garden, and we built a disc golf course. There is year. a disc golf course, D. Giddy up. And I went out there. I, I took my coaching staff for our under-10 girls soccer team. We had a retreat, and we had uh, the delicious food truck. Uh, we all had many beers each, and mm. we played disc golf. Why disc golf? I mean, is one of y'all into it? or? Yeah, so we used to, in the early days of Steel String, go to the UNC course after a busy brew day. And we would... Uh, you know, just play very casually. I don't think we even, like, brought real discs. I yeah. mean, maybe had a Frisbee. Um, never very good, but I think when we thought of this property, we were thinking of, like, what's the cool thing we add, could add? Um, I have a good friend whose brother actually designs disc golf courses up in Virginia. Very cool. And so got in touch with him, and he was super excited to come down and work on it. Um, and we just, uh, with some volunteers and with some employees and friends, we just kind of knocked it out over a course of, you know, five or six weekends. Um, and there's still a lot of work to do. Right now we have 13 total holes. Yeah, that was good. Yeah. Eventually we'll get up to 18 or more. Um, but right now it's, you know, it's a fun course to play. It's I think, challenging for a lot of different skill levels. It's uh, also something that's pretty beginner friendly, I think. The first four are, you know, I think good entry level yeah. if you're trying to get into the sport. Um, and, you know, we have some discs you can borrow. You know, welcome to bring your own. And we also have a putting course and a putting league we do on Sundays. So we're really just trying to, guess, connect more to the community. I know a lot of people picked it up during the pandemic, and it's just exciting to see that a lot of people have responded so far yeah. positively. So, again, I've been playing for, like, 20-some-odd years. This tournament we had in August, I don't know if it was good timing because no one was, you know, this is back when people were just, I think, yearning for something to do. I remember thinking maybe we'll get 20, 30 people to sign up. That'd be cool. And I completely sold out of spots at like 62. I, I, oh. Yeah, we capped out. And another 10 or 15 wanted to play. It was a huge success. But now You'll I know. Have to come organize our t- No, I was going to say, mm-hmm. I was going to say next year, um, and I love Carbro. They were very cool with having the tournament there. But I could have it at the farm, Deej. Mm-hmm. And then everyone can just drink a beer right after. So maybe we'll uh, – there's a lot of things I want to work with you on, Eric. Oh, one-stop yeah. shopping. You could drink during, although I find it better to drink a water during and then have my beer after or before. Mm. Got to stay hydrated. Uh, Definitely, especially when it's hot out there. It, yeah. A lot of sun. We recommend staying hydrated. <laughs> you got to stay hydrated. The transition to making all of your beer out at the farm versus making it at um, – because in the old days you were making it at – Absolutely, right down the street. Right in downtown Carborough. Yeah, very small space. Very tight space. Yeah. Now we have a, a seven thousand square foot 
building that we, you know, is dedicated to brewing for the most part. Yeah. So pros and cons. I mean, obviously just more room to spread, spread out obviously is a pro. A big pro is, yeah, the more space, kind of the location of it is, you know, on 54 is close to kind of the markets that we're trying to grow into. Yeah. So there's that benefit. We have our own forklift now, which we couldn't in that small space. Where could you put it, right? Oh, uh, yeah. It'd be like that scene in uh, Mike Myers movie uh, when he uh, is in the golf cart. Yeah, and, and Austin he just goes back for Yeah, at Austin oh, yeah. Powers. <laughs> yeah, I rewatched that recently. It, Me too. It, it holds up. The first um, two were... were, were they were still pretty funny, I thought. Yeah, they were going <laughs> that is exactly what it would look like if someone tried to drive a forklift through a steel string. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Our, we once proposed it to our landlords, and they were like, no. Mm. <laughs> Maybe a but, segue. <laughs> but, yeah, so there's some benefits like that. But, um, like I said, we run off of well water, which is really exciting and awesome. But uh, there's a lot of challenges because there's no sewer out there. So we have a very complex wastewater system. Oh, I, I bet. Can go really in detail with that, but it's not, I don't think, great radio chat. <laughs> well, hold on. Deej, you want to talk about waste? Kind of curious uh, how you flush <laughs> a kidding. toilet out there. Now we don't have to talk about toilets. Um, <sighs> let's shift gears to beer. Let's talk beer. Um, yeah, I so, mean, we, uh, Deej, we have the owner of a brewery. We do. Perhaps yeah. we should talk about beer. Okay. I didn't like IPAs till I was uh, about 35. I, I don't know what happened, but I uh, like you hear of an acquired taste. I acquired it perhaps as the, the bitterness of life catches up with you. The You want a more bitter <laughs> beer or something. So w- what are IPAs and why are they stigmatized? Like why... Chris just said yeah. something like, oh, I'm a white guy with IP. Like, why, why do people love to hate IPAs? I think because they're just so ubiquitous and that you just expect wherever you go that, like, IPAs can be front and center. Mm-hmm. And I think if you have a taste for pretty much any other style, you're just going to get sick and tired of seeing IPAs, IPAs, hmm. IPAs. Yeah. In some places we go and I go to, you know, I check out the tap list at any bar or restaurant I go to and I'm like, they have five IPAs and they don't have a, a lager. They don't have a stout or something that's like, you know, for a different taste, something lighter, like a wheat beer or a Saison. Like, you know, there's just so many different styles that I think any good tap list should have some variety and hit some check marks. Um, but, you know, also people I think have gone overboard with too many hop additions, you know, too much bitterness or too much just, you know, you can get, even if it's not so bitter, you can just get so much uh, hop flavor that it just overwhelms the beer. I think you're seeing a, a dialing back and, brewers in general and in, in trying to get back into like a sweet spot of getting as much hot flavor you can get out of something but without really overloading it mm-hmm. i think we've thankfully i think turned a corner in the industry do you see another beer becoming the ipa of the last decade for a minute people thought that the hard seltzers were going to be the new yeah. ipa oh, yeah, but yeah, that yeah. um i think kind of has at least has plateaued in terms of sales at a national level right. um but i think you're seeing a lot of people wanting to I, I don't know if it's a health thing or if it's uh, just a like ease of consumption thing, but I think right. people are looking for that kind of light, easy thing. And I think at a craft level, that's really hard to pull off because a grocery store, yeah. you know, chain or like you know, your Anheuser Busch can make a decent one, and it's what people are going to see. So I don't know if there's room for the craft industry to really get into that, but most trends I go away from. I've never bought a pair of jeans that already had a hole in them, for mm. example. You I would rip them yourself. Yeah, or just mow the lawn. It's stolen and, Valor. Yeah, exactly. Okay, but the IPA, can I call it a trend, Eric? It's a very long trend at The this very point. long IPA trend, I'm all in on. It is mm. absolutely my favorite beer, is, is a heavily hopped beer. And I walk in and I'm like, I know I'm a freaking stereotype, but I do love it. You know what I mean? What do you hear as an owner, what do you, what do you, when you hear me say that, you're just like... Hey, if we're making them, if you like it, I'm happy. If you're selling beer, you're selling beer. But, I yeah, I, I, you know, I try to steer people towards all sorts of different things. I yeah. personally drink a lot of lagers, um, especially if I'm working out on the farm. I want something that's refreshing, crisp, yeah. a lawnmower beer. Um, mm-hmm. And we thankfully make some pretty good versions of those. But, yeah, all sorts of things. We also do a lot of kind of sours that use either fruits, not yet that we're growing. Our goal with the orchard is eventually to have all these fruits that we can put into our sour beer program. But for now, we get, thankfully, like really high-quality local fruit when we can. That's in season. Um, And we actually have a festival coming up where we are getting sour beers from breweries from out the south. It's coming up on April 30th. Yeah, let's um, get into it's it. It's called Fields of Funk. And, April uh, 30th, Fields yeah, so of Funk. We're going to show mm. off two of our sour beers, one that's a, a blueberry and rum barrel aged sour, and then one, like I said before, the Shady Grove is a raspberry sour. It's one that people have come to know from us and excited to show this year's variety, that version of it. Their yeah, food so or we, their bands. We're, we're 
getting beer from about 30 breweries. Um, 30 mostly breweries. southern beach. breweries, but some from all over. Yeah. Um, we've got a funk band, Funkle Stilt Skin. They're out of Boone. <laughs> mm. um, they are, definitely bring the party. And nice. uh, we've got a DJ, a local DJ. DJ PhD, I don't know if you'll know. I've got DJ Tom's, Simons. Oh. Okay. Okay. Well, maybe next festival. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, he's uh, good. He's good. He's going to be spinning some classic funk vinyl, which nice. is really exciting. I'm a huge uh, part of the Funkadelic and all that stuff. Oh, yeah. So uh, I'm a... Uh, like very excited. That was kind of the theme of like thinking through like wh- how are we going to tie this all together. Um, but we've got a really cool art- artist who did the art for the festival is doing a uh, paint by numbers mural that everyone can come in. It's going to be like you know a big plywood thing that people can kind of add their addition to. How cool! Hopefully paint within the lines and you know the way it's supposed to, so it ends up looking like something. Yeah. But you know it's something <laughs> everyone can contribute to. Um, Earlier and, in the day, I could see that being successful. Later yeah, in the day, you might want to just take it away. We we'll probably will. Uh, and then. Uh, <laughs> Funky Dory out of Durham is a cool vinyl shop, and they also sell glass, um, and they're going to come out and do a little pop-up shop. Nice. Um, so we've got a lot of different things going on. It's food? Fun. Food truck? Yeah, we've got food trucks. We've got um, a cheese shop that's coming to the area is going to do these, like, cheese uh, charcuterie boards. Um, it's going to be a it's gonna be a fun day. It's 2 to 8 p.m. at Pluck Farm on the 30th. That sounds cheese awesome. Cheese and beer. We basically Twist my arm, Chris. We have your next two weekends covered. If you're not at the WCOM Friends and Family Festival on Saturday, April 23rd, mm-hmm. followed by the Fields of Funk on mm-hmm. Saturday, April 30th, then why are you living in Carbro, Deej? Is there a question? Yeah, come on. It's rhetorical. I can't answer it's it. Ridiculous. When I first called him, they thought about having it the same day as our event, and then it we couldn't do that deal. It worked mm-hmm. out well for us that they for both of us. Absolutely. I think. And and by the way, Eric, not just saying this because we're live on the air to millions of listeners, but anything we can do to help support you. Yeah. I mean, we look at it. This is a small town. We we look at you all as partners, and I hope you. I hope that feeling is mutual. Yeah, Carver has been great to us. So the next act of the day is uh, Saludos Compay, mm. who's been playing in Carbro for decades. Wow. So let's hit him with this little Saludos Compay. Right. Wait till you dig this, Deej. Yeah, and then we'll uh, keep talking with Eric Knight. Yep. Here we go, baby. Qué difícil dejar de lado lo que una vez fue locura El cariño compartido, esa pasión desmesurada Que deja una ruptura Un vacío insaciable Allí crecen las heridas Que acaban al corazón Por eso pon cicatriz a tu llaga No la dejes sangrar Pon cicatriz a tu llaga Que te puede quemar Pon cicatriz a tu llaga No la dejes sangrar Pon cicatriz a tu llaga Que te puede quemar Ese día que me fui y dejé esta aventura Me dijiste no hay derecho que acabe con tu vida Duro fue el encontrón, dura fue la partida Se abrieron allí queridas que se hizo del corazón Por eso pon cicatriz a tu llaga, no la dejes sangrar Pon cicatriz a tu llaga Te puede quemar, pon cicatriz a tu llaga, no la dejes sangrar, pon cicatriz a tu llaga, te puede quemar. Sangrar, con cicatriz a tu llaga, 
te puede quemar Ese día que me fui y dejé esta aventura Me dijiste no hay derecho que acabe con tu vida Duro fue el encontrón, dura fue la partida Se abrieron allí heridas que se hizo del corazón Por eso pon cicatriz a tu llaga, no la dejes sangrar Pon cicatriz a tu llaga que te puede quemar, pon cicatriz a tu llaga, no la dejes sangrar, pon cicatriz a tu llaga, que te puede quemar, pon cicatriz a tu llaga, no la dejes sangrar, pon cicatriz a tu llaga, que te puede quemar, pon cicatriz a tu llaga, no la dejes sangrar. Pon cicatriz a tu llaga, que te puede quemar. Ni tú ni yo sabíamos lo que estaba pasando. Ni tú ni yo sabíamos lo que iba a pasar. Ni tú ni yo sabíamos lo que estaba pasando. Ni tú ni yo sabíamos lo que iba a pasar. Listen to that. Mm. Saludos, Campai. Muy really bueno. A long time Carborough, Chapel Hill area Latin band. They're kicking off around 3.30 at the uh, WCOM Friends and Family Festival Fiesta Fundraiser, mm. which is going to feature our good friends Steel String Brewery. Mm. And uh, maybe they'll have some, not Maggie's Farmhouse, but... Saison, what was it again? Sadie Saison. Sadies. <laughs> Sadies. So back to the naming thing. DJ pointed it out earlier. So uh, breweries over the last 10 to 15 years, to the benefit of all of us, have popped up left and right all over the country. Every, even little where I'm from, Huntington, West Virginia, has a couple. Um, the naming, that you're, that was kind of your point earlier, it gets harder and harder to name them because all the names are taken? Or? Yeah, absolutely. And you feel like your name started becoming, you know, th- five words that, yeah. you know, you try to fit that on a label and make it make sense to people. I mean, sometimes if it's a, a, a lyric that's you know, somewhat obscure, you know, two people are like, oh, yeah, I yeah. love that song. <laughs> but if it you know, gets out there. And, and how important is artwork, Eric? I have that T-shirt you're wearing right now. I meant to wear it tonight, Deej, to, mm. to be on brand. I, I have a steel string shirt. Yeah, we both, I, we both, again, we've had many. Uh, I wore my Golden Girls shirt. He, Deej went with the... Carolina Blue Golden Girls T-shirt. Yeah, stay golden. In honor, it's rest blue. in peace, uh, Betty yeah. White and Rue McClanahan. Yeah, all four of them. I think they're all dead. Uh, they're all no longer with us. But I've always enjoyed Steel Strings artwork. Eric, how important is kind of the the artwork as a big piece of it? And, and your guys' stuff is unique, I think. Yeah. So our for the most part, our work has always been done by our friend Charles Sheppa. Yeah, Charles um, Sheppa. Yeah. And from the beginning, we knew we wanted this, you know, kind of cartoon. Um, kind of laid back, um, weird vibe with our artwork style. So um, we've kind of stuck with that. It's evolved over the years and changed. And as you know, I think as he's developed as an artist, and you know, we've kind of wanted to take it in certain different directions. Um, we also have been working with a young artist named Cassidy Putnam out on the farm for similar kind of monster, you know, out there. Your monster forward. Yes, yeah, yeah. We love, um, you know, putting, like, giant monsters attacking Carboro. So we have <laughs> one of my favorite pieces of, you know, merch or art that we ever did is a, a sweater that has a giant raccoon, like, looming over the Century Center. Mm. And, uh, you know, we've always, like, thought of, you know, weird, wacky kind of monsters that in- live amongst us. Deej has been referred to as a giant monster attacking Carboro once or twice, I believe. Oh, yeah. Hey, every, uh, every night after the show. <laughs> Uh, we talked about the farm. Uh, uh, why Pluck? Just because there are chickens? Uh, there are not chickens, but uh. maybe one day. Uh, yeah, so the name Pluck came to us a number of years back before we you know, really even had the idea that we wanted to do a farm. But, you know, we liked the idea that, you know, we we're a steel string, so you, you pluck a string. Oh, we yeah. liked, uh, you That's know, what you I was pluck thinking. a you chicken that? feather. Yeah. You pluck, you know, flowers or a berry. 
um, but also like you know in a more poetic sense of just like to have pluck is to you know go about something unique and with your own kind of style and so nice we felt those things all fit together and so it was mm. it was not people plucking their eyebrows it had nothing to do it with could that be. it it's, could we're, be we're plucking you're inclusive <laughs> like you can pluck anything <laughs> as long as you can sell it to us as you know that it's uh, the plucking motion we're okay with it <laughs> i like it eric all right so you found it still certain kind of for live music it sounds like but uh what is it about like places like austin texas where there's just foot traffic and if you just play some music, some people will come in. Why isn't it like that in Carborough? What would we need to do to make that a thing? What's going on? Well, population for one. But. Yeah, I don't know. Carborough, I feel like I, I've kind of come of age here and seen so many awesome musicians that I, I'm happy to call my friends, like, you know, the people in Mandolin Orange, Mipso. I, Two great bands. When I came to college in 2005 in Greensboro, there was just like, so many great musicians and that's another town that had like a scene that I felt like was just on the verge of like really becoming nationally known and like a lot of the musicians were just kind of really getting their start there and like you know yeah. for whatever reason people say like you know why isn't there that one venue or that one institution in the town that really makes it this like in Austin or something else and I don't really know what it is from like a national success point of view but in terms of just like great music and just being able to go either to a house show or to a place like the cave or the nightlight you know any of these local 506 like yeah there's the always such great music I think we have a decent scene Deej mm. don't, don't, you don't not as vibrant as you just, are I don't know I mean you would know better than me because you're a local business owner but uh yeah just be nice if like just like, like get more foot traffic. Like, yeah. like the band just starts playing and just people, people just pour in to check like a you New out. Orleans yeah. or a, yeah. yeah, that's true. Cause we, we do want to be New Orleans. We, yeah. Do, yeah. we do go see a lot of uh, music and, and there's some wandering in, but I, I take your point. It's not mm. this kind of always on festive sort of atmosphere. Uh, but we, I think we're we got local five hundred six, the cave, the station, the cradle, obviously front room and back room. But it's almost like more appointment viewing, right? People mm. show up because they bought a ticket, rather than just kind of the wandering in, whatnot. Yeah, you know? yeah, I, I, yeah. Right beside us is the art center. Mm-hmm. Guess what grocery store this building used to be? It's Piggly Wiggly. God. Mm. Every time I put grocery store in the question, they get it. I said Piggly Wiggly earlier in the oh. show. I think I, <laughs> I think I primed him for that. Not. It used to be a Piggly Wiggly. Well done, sir. You've got your farmer's market coming up. You've got our event coming up. And then what? This you, is the time of year for events. It mm. is. Grateful Dave and I sat down in December and just looked at every date on the calendar to try to pick a date that didn't compete with the. Yeah, I think you called me and you're like, what about this weekend? And I was like, uh, mm. I think you, we're going to do it. And then there was also like another giant beer festival in Raleigh. And then. Brugaloo was yeah. the big, yeah. From our perspective, it's just like you have to pick and choose. There's never not going to be a right. weekend where you're going to be competing with something that's right fun and you know in the same sense of like oh this is actually people are going to want to go to that thing and not yeah mm. but i'm thinking of it more as a music festival so i didn't want to compete with like the merle fest clyde fest right. festival for the eno all those uh, march madness i wanted to avoid and then the obvious things easter mother's day etc when you brought up cardinal directions i was like oh yeah that would be i wouldn't want to compete i i have no problem going the same day as brugaloo from the attendees perspective but what they did is it consume a lot of food trucks so i had a really hard time finding the second food truck and uh, emmy your taproom manager led me to let's eat Awesome. And so thank you, Emmy, who did not want to be on the air. Yeah. The mention of coming on the air and Emmy was like her face just did know Emmy. Emmy is wonderful. She was re- really, she's been so cool to work with. The final piece of the puzzle for this event was that second food truck. Mm. So, um, uh, yeah, Brugaloo, I'm not like, I think if someone wants to go to a beer festival, they should go to Say it. Say Boogaloo. <laughs> yeah, Boo. Exactly. We need I'll a marketing brand. Yeah. You should go to that if you're in Raleigh. Yeah. Brugaloo. Yeah, it'll be cool. And then, but then the closer we get, there's like a big thing in Southern Village. There's some, it's record store day. Although that I see is an ad. Absolutely. That's an ad. There's a thing in whatever there's things. So the third live act of the day Mm. is uh, a wonderful trio. They were a duo when we, when we met them, the Carolina songbirds. Okay. Yeah. Uh, And and Eric, we had them in here. It was the first ever live performance in our show. It was so awesome. They sat right where you are. Oh, it was amazing. And, uh, and then since then they've added a mandolin player to each. Yep. And uh, they're fantastic. Here we go. Mm. One, two. Hush, little darling, don't say a word. Mom's gonna buy you a mockingbird. Say, darling, say. If the 
has ever happened it's on this amazing. show <laughs> so good the carolina songbirds the carolina wow. songbirds the third act of the night at yeah. the wcom friends and family festival roughly 4 30 d okay i'll be there by then yeah. folks have had two or three of eric's delicious beers yes. they're it's, settling into the night mm. the Cena brewery is also being there. our friends mm. of the Cena are so, going to be there thank you and you know what options yeah, and it was their idea to invite you. Um, so what is the relationship of, between brewers? Just like a you do your thing, we do our thing? Like, It is a lot of you do your thing, we do our thing, but it's very much uh, friendly in terms of like if you have a question about you know, how does this regulatory thing work? Or how, yeah. do you have this piece of equipment? I, mine thing broke. It's, it's very friendly. And, Respect. Yeah. And, mm. and yeah. I think just in general, we want more good breweries to be around and more people yeah. drinking craft beer because I think a high tide will lift all boats. Yeah, I think um, so too. Especially in a small town like this. And it's awesome to see that we've got um, craft beer brewing depot down the street. We've got yep. the Dingo Dog Brewing Tap Dingo Brewing Dog. on mm. the street. Casino here, and so that's just cool to see that that's Still all strain. come, yeah, yeah, and since yeah. the time we've been here. So, Mr. Knight, you got any like social media you want to plug, or uh, yeah. where can we find you guys? Yeah, we're on Instagram and Facebook at Steel Stream Brewery for both, um, and then you can check out the farm at pluck.farm. Um, and steelstreambrewery.com is our website. We try to keep up with those things, but you know, generally, uh, it's I don't know. We're none of us are great social media fans ourselves, mm. but we do like to get the word out about what we're doing. So if you if you're into those things, please check us out there, brother. Mm. I'm in the exact same boat as you, and I forgot. I, I meant to start the show with this. He has one of the best work titles I've ever seen in my entire life. Oh, yeah. He is the Hoopla Czar. Ooh, that's his official title, Deej. Yeah, I want it to be the Propaganda Czar, but my. <laughs> uh, oh, I saw that on your Facebook. My yeah, my. Uh, 
fellow partners were like, that's a little too dark. That's so mm. like, I like it. it up and, you know, yeah. Hoopla was a, a compromise. Eric, so, I love Hoopla. Yeah. I love it. I no. love chaos. I love nonsense. I've always wanted a cool title, Deej. Yeah, we'll, we'll work Can on it. Can we get me one? Here's what no. I want mine to be. How about this? Just hear, hear me out. Vice President of Nonsense. I like it. The that's VPN. what I want to be. We got to get out of here. Uh, DJ Simon's good to see you again. Yeah, the audience man. is happy. I got a lot of texts. People appreciate you being here. It's good to be back. Commissioner Joe Hauser was very nervous that you were going to miss yet another episode. Oh, no, never. Uh, any last thoughts, sir? No, spring is sprung. Get out there, do stuff. And there's stuff coming go up. Listen to music. Go, yeah. go to a brewery so if you're a beer drinker. There, uh, nice. so en- enjoy life. Enjoy the summer life. of George. Folks, DJ Simons, right there. You have it. Uh, Saturday, April 23rd at uh, Carbro Commons, and then uh, Saturday, April 30th at The Farm. Um, Eric Knight, thanks so much, brother. Thank you guys so much for having me. Come back. It's been fun. I any, will. Any last thoughts, words? Oh, uh, I'm excited to see what you're going to play us out with. We're going to play. This is my, a buddy of mine, UNC alum, and, I, and a colleague, Jay Carlos, and he will be the final act at, at the festival. Ooh, so beautiful. Come on out, folks, next Saturday. We'll see you there. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you so much. Have a good night. And the sky is falling If the rivers are overflowing I won't get carried away Cause I'm gonna change My mind So the oceans are rising the plains are dry And there's no compromising In the halls up high And the crows are feasting At the beggar's ball Everybody's cheating And I don't care at all Cause I Come near You gotta let the truth come near